Nebraska Extension plant pathologist Tamara Jackson Zim says Nebraska corn farmers have observed an unfamiliar disease in several areas of the state. We recently talked with Tamara to learn more about scouting, identifying, and managing the disease. This disease is a bacterial disease that we've been watching for over a couple of years now, and the name of the disease is bacterial leaf streak, and it's caused by a species of the bacterium that is Xanthomonas vesicolopathivar vasculorum. And this particular species, in addition to infecting corn, is also known to cause an important disease called gumming disease in sugarcane and other parts of the world. What are its distinguishing characteristics? Well, this particular disease is one that uh, is causing some lesions on the plant leaves that people are noticing. Often they start in the lower leaves and they're between the veins. And so it looks a lot like some of the other common diseases that we've been seeing and, and is being frequently misdiagnosed. And we wanna make sure that people are aware of it. How do you distinguish this disease from perhaps other diseases in corn? Well, this bacterial disease does cause lesions that are very narrow and sometimes like a stripe between the veins. Well, that can look very similar to things like gray leaf spot that's caused by a fungus. But one thing that we emphasize is that gray leaf spot lesions tend to have very rectangular shapes with smooth linear margins. Well, in contrast, this bacterial disease very commonly has wavy margins. And so if you look very closely, you should be able to see that the edges of these lesions may look a little bit different. And you might want to look at quite a few lesions and leaf samples to really get a handle on that symptom. These lesions can be brown to tan and often yellow. And so if you hold those leaves up to the sun and backlight it, for example, you'll see the yellow uh, coloration very obviously. And that's another way that we can differentiate it from other things like gray leaf spot. Where has this disease been located? Well, we've confirmed this disease in several counties in Nebraska and some of our neighboring states as well. And so we're watching this disease closely and trying to better understand it and to conduct more research on it. And what's been the impact? We don't have specific research on what the yield impacts are. And so uh, I'll tell you though, in most of the fields where I've seen it, it's, it's been more of a cosmetic issue, an oddity. And so where you may have more of the disease, we may see more or less impact. But right now we really don't fully understand that. Has treatment been effective? Foliar fungicides are not expected to stop this bacterial disease. Although there are some bactericides that are labeled for use on corn, there are some limitations that they have that might make them impractical. For example, some of the common effective bactericides may contain copper. Well, those products are not systemic, and so they will remain on the surface of leaves and be washed off by rainfall or irrigation, and they may require repeated applications, and that might make them uh, ineconomical. What's the recommendation to the farmer that might be concerned about this disease then, Tamara? Well, if they have this disease, I'll tell you that we don't have specific research yet on controlling this exact disease, but we recommend some of the general management practices that we have for other bacterial diseases like it. And so, for example, we know that this disease, this pathogen, is overwintering in infected crop debris from previous years, and so you are likely to see that disease developing in the same fields and areas year after year, like we did with Goss's wilt. So we also recommend crop rotation as a way to give that infected debris time to break down. And if people are still using tillage in their cropping system, that might be a way to help promote degradation. Although I'll caution that neither of these methods are expected to cause or give you complete control. It won't eliminate the risk of disease. It will just reduce severity in future years. What does the grower do if he or she finds a disease that they're unfamiliar with? If, if they're having trouble making a diagnosis, they have a lot of resources available to them, and especially the UNL Plant and Pest Diagnostic Clinic. So we recommend putting that sample in a plastic bag and submitting it for analysis at the clinic to make sure that they know what it is before they make any treatment decisions. You can find more about this disease in a recent article from Tamara. We'll link to that on the Market Journal website.